It's Brian Preston, the money guy. <laughs> On to the next question. <laughs> Sugar Beets has a question. Sugar Beets? Sugar Beets. B E E T S or B E A T S? B E E T S. Like Dwight makes grows like, great beets or, yes. or like Dr. Dre makes awesome beets? Like Dwight Schrute beets. Dwight Schrute, okay. not Dr. Yes. Dre. Got it. Okay. Good differentiator. So Sugar Beets has a question. My wife and I own a startup business. Is there a breaking point to where it is advantageous to contribute to employees' retirement? And he's asking because we want to help them get started on the foo ASAP, which I just thought was very kind. Oh, it is great. Yeah, so being a business owner is interesting, right? A lot of folks want to be business owners so that they can uh, make themselves more wealthy, so that they can uh, do something meaningful for customers and for clients and that they can build wealth, that they can build up their army of dollars, and that's a great thing. But a lot of business owners really get a lot of utility out of providing a path and a means and a mechanism for their employees underneath them to also have the ability to do that. So when it comes to retirement planning and deciding when do I put a plan in, you have to really figure out what the goals are. When you're doing retirement planning, are the goals for, okay, me as an owner, I wanna think about tax benefits and tax incentives and ways to legally hide money from the government. Do I want to work on employee retention? Do I want to provide something exciting so that people want to come work for me, want to be a part of me? Uh, or do I want to do it just because I need something to do with excess capital? I don't have a way to deploy it so I can deploy it into like HR, human resources, employee benefits. I think a lot of people are surprised to find out, and Brian, this is what I want you to speak to. Those don't always have to work counter to one another. You can have a great retirement plan that allows the owner to sock away a lot of money and save a lot of money in taxes and do a lot of wealth building. And in doing that, also provide an amazing benefit for the employees that allows them to do the exact same thing. I find it unique in life when you find these these unicorn win-win opportunities. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly because you're right. I mean, I think a lot of people... They are looking to save for retirement to build their own wealth, but the government has now incentivized it in such a way that, and I love hearing that Sugar Beets also has the motivation that they want to see in a fulfillment of their making the world a better place, an opportunity, a path for their employees to also build independence. That's what I mean when I say win-win. The government's going to reward them for saving for their own retirement and also reward them for creating a path for their employees by, by incentivizing them, you know, just like you pour gasoline in a carburetor to kind of fire it up. There's a reason like with my, you know, my own oldest daughter, I was giving her a match from a young age to try to encourage her to build that saving and investing habit. I want you to think about the same way with your, your employees. You can, that's what the employer match is there to do is to kind of incentivize their own participation in this. But let's talk about kind of the what I call the trajectory or the path of a small business owner is that typically you start a business, you're broke. Nobody sees that struggle, but but it's true. That first two to three years, very few businesses, you, you go light the fire of starting your business. You're getting there printing business cards, and then all of a sudden you're making seven figures. No, that's only on TikTok and YouTube that they they hide all the planting of the seeds, the growing of the sapling, and then they turn into this great fruitful endeavor. Um, it actually takes time and a process, but it is one of those things that I've seen in my journey and I've experienced with a lot of clients is that you will have that period where you start to get some traction in your small business and you're, you're, you're having enough money come in that you, you go do your taxes and the, and the accountant's like, man, we got to figure out a way for you to lower your taxes. Um, have you ever considered a SEP IRA? Mm -hmm. And you look at the SEP IRA because guess what? It's one of the few investment vehicles that you didn't have to have it set up in the tax year that you're doing. The following year when you're actually preparing taxes, the government lets you actually go back in time and fund a retirement account um, and get a deduction for the prior year's taxes. It's really a great, I mean, I, I could make a DeLorean reference or whatever you want because it's one of the few things that lets you go back in time. But there is a catch with it. All contributions with SEP IRAs are from the employer only. So you'll probably do this, especially if you do the math and figure out, okay, how much do I have to give the employees? What's the benefit that comes from taxes? What's the benefit that goes in my retirement account? You'll probably do this for a year or so, but as you start adding employees, 
these things don't get they're, they're, they're kind of expensive mm-hmm. because if you're having if you're trying to put 15 percent in your account you're having to put 15 percent in every one of your employees accounts it can really get expensive and probably once you get past two employees you're like man I don't even know if this is covering the taxes mm-hmm. so so there's got to be a next step in the past, and I, I went on this journey. I did a simple IRA because a simple IRA allowed you to kind of, it was, you didn't want to do a 401k in, in the old days. I sound like an old man on the porch, but you didn't want to do a 401k because that 401ks required you to have 5,500s every year. It was tax compliance. There was annual filings. There was all this testing. So you went the simple IRA because that allowed you to have something that looked like a 401k, um, allowed your employees to save for their own retirement. Then you typically had to put three or four percent into their simple IRAs. But the the funding thresholds are much lower. So you, as a business owner, you just couldn't save as much. Mm-hmm. And I don't have the numbers in front of me, Bo, but is around thirteen thousand something like that. Yeah. Whereas you know, four hundred one ks are you know over twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So you can see there was a big funding hole there. But fast forward, and once again, this great world we live in, where innovation, technology. It has has made the world a better place. 401ks have modernized. Now you can structure these safe harbor 401ks once you have employees. Now, look, I skipped solo 401ks sure. because there's usually if you're growing a business and it's just you and your spouse are the only employees, you can do what's called a solo 401k that lets you exempt out of a lot of the testing and stuff. But you've already let us know, Sugar Beats, you have employees or an employee. Mm-hmm. So that that blows up the solo 401k. So I'm just skipping that for this answer and going right to the traditional 401k. You can probably look at a safe harbor type 401k, which allows you, you're going to once again put that 3 to 4%. Sounds very similar to that simple IRA. In, but it lets you skirt past some of the testing and other requirements. And now you, your spouse, and your employees can do salary deferrals up to the full. What, what's the new number in 2023? Uh, $22,500. Woo! Man, we're getting on up there. I'm old enough that I remember when that number was like $10,000. So, I mean, we have really, from an inflation standpoint, kicked this thing up. Um, you can really do a lot of good for your employees and you. I, I gave probably a lot of color there, Bo. Is there anything I left off? No, I think because the ultimate question was, how do I know when? You got to do some mathematic calculation. You got to figure out what's the tax benefit, what's the cost, both in terms of administration for administering the plan, and then what's the employee cost. And you look at those two and you determine, is there a big enough benefit to offset all the cost, Or if there's not, is the benefit I'll receive from my workforce great enough to justify taking this on? And oftentimes that math works out really, really nicely that it is a benefit you can make available, but you got to do the math. 